Hey, happy Tuesday. You know, it, it was a good day. You know what just happened? I found my sock. This is one of my trouser socks. I have not had to get these out in a long time. I only wear these when I'm working, like in an actual place. And I wore this pair, both of them. I didn't hop around on one leg all day. I, I wore them both and I washed them both. And then when I was putting away laundry, I can only find one and I'm going, I know damn well I wore two socks that day, but I couldn't find the other one. Well, just a little bit ago, um, I was getting out some fresh, clean Aldi pajamas to put on after my shower and this fell out of the shirt. It was stuck up in the shirt, the pajama shirt. So that's good. I can, I can pair it up with the other one now. I have a spot on top of my chest of drawers. It's like the land of lost socks, you know, the long lost loves, the, the hopeless unmatched socks. They just live on top of my chest of drawers and there's always at least one sock up there that, and the mate will eventually find its way back to me. It either ended up in one of my kids' drawers, like they, they were putting away their stuff, my younger son usually, and then he'll find it in his drawer and go, Mom, your sock keeps, your socks keep ending up in here. And I'm going, well, you're the one who puts your laundry away. So I think we know who might be responsible for them ending up in there. You're just grabbing stuff and just chucking it in there without looking at it. What was that? I keep hearing noises. I think the cats are out there wrestling in the hallway. We got um, a new TV. Nothing fancy at all. It's nothing, nothing fancy. I just, um, the TV that we had was like a 50 inch cheapo TV that I bought when Glenda the Good Witch and I first split up that I was going to have at the apartment that we had to live in for the first year while we were sorting out some stuff because we had refinanced his house with both of our names on it. We had to, you know, sort all that out before I could buy a house for myself. Um, so we, I just decided, let me just go, I'm going to go lease an apartment for a year. And so we had like a three bedroom apartment for a year. And that gave you plenty of time to get all that sorted out and save up some money and get this place. So um, I bought this cheap TV at Walmart. It was like $250. It worked great though. It was fantastic. So that was seven years ago, almost exactly seven years ago. And it was getting to the point that, oh, there's a, hey, pumpkin, look, it's pumpkin, pumpkin. Hey, you speaking to me? She. This is the first time she's come in here in about a week. Pumpkin, don't be scared. Hey, see, let me tell you what happens, okay? Every eight months, I have to swap out their Soresto collars. I'm not gonna do anything. With her, the best way to do it is to get her to come in here with me and I'll have the collar in here and I shut that door and I shut this door and I shut the door to the bath the, where the toilet is in there. So I have her kind of like trapped in here so she can't get away. And she always hisses at me. It, the whole thing takes less than 20 seconds. Like I, I go ahead and snip the old collar off before I get her in here, like a, the day before or something. And then she'll hiss at me because she knows what I'm gonna do. Like cat, I already have it like put together. I just have to slip it over her head and tighten it. The whole thing is super quick. But this is the only room you can do it in because anywhere else she'll get away from you. But I get her in here and I shut the door. And then after that, for a week or two, she won't come in here. Like she she won't. She's scared, she won't. She acts all traumatized like cat. Seriously, that's the first time she's come in here because I, I did that, it was about a week ago. I swapped out her collar and oh my Lord, she's so terrified. And after that, she won't let me get near her for the rest of the day. She will not let me pet her. She will not let me get, like cat, it was not that bad, okay? I went whoop and I put a collar over your head and tightened it a little bit. The whole thing was over before you even knew what was happening. But oh Lord, it is the most traumatic thing ever. And then she's, she got her feelings hurt and she won't let me get near her for the rest of the day. And oh my word, the drama. Every eight months I go through this. Boop is super easy. Boop is so easy. Boop used to be the hardest. I have derailed my own conversation. I hear it. I have derailed my own conversation. I'll get, what was I saying? The TV, I'll get back to that in a minute. Boop is super easy. The vet gave me a really good tip. She said, I'll tell you what you do with her. Get her used to going into a small room. And I have a, the bathroom, half bath downstairs. It's small. 
get her used to going in there, take some treats in there that she likes and get her used to you going in there with her and shutting the door. And if you got to put on a collar, you got to do ear stuff, whatever it is you need to do that she doesn't like, she will get used to it and she will tolerate it if she knows there's a treat coming. As soon as you're done, get that treat down there for her. She will be much easier to work with. And she was. Oh, oh, it's so much easier. She doesn't scratch me. She doesn't hurt me. She doesn't like it, but she will tolerate it because she knows as soon as I finish, there's a treat coming and she is very food motivated. She loves treats more than anything. So if she knows there's a treat coming, she doesn't like it, but she'll tolerate it. And as soon as I do whatever, I go in there to, to swap out her collar and do her ear stuff. Um, Cause she has trouble with, with ear problems. I don't know what it is. The vet said some cats just have recurring ear issues. It's, I don't know. It's like the shape of their ear or something. Uh, so I take her in there to do her ear drops and to clean her ears a little bit and to do the collar, which I have to do every eight months. But it's better than trying to put the drops between the shoulder blades. God, hey, you have to do that every freaking month. My hair is sliding. Evie, you basically just, I wait, I'll put down some wet food for her and then I just sort of go around kind of behind her and I just kind of grab her with both hands and do the collar or whatever. And um, she's so funny because when you grab her, she'll go, oh, and she'll, she'll make a little move to get away and then she will literally just go, huh. it's like, fine, whatever, just... Just do it. And then as soon as you're done, she runs away. <laughs> They're all three very different. Punkin always hisses at me. She, she does this little thing. She'll do these weird meows and hiss at me when I have her in here. She hates it. But I won't have to do it again until December, so she should be happy. Um, yeah, it was like April, like the last day of April, I think, when I did it. Anyway, um, so yeah, the TV, the older, the old cheapy cheap TV, it was starting to kind of across the top. It's not super noticeable, but the, the top portion of the screen is a little darker than the rest. And once my younger son pointed it out, I couldn't unsee it. Like I couldn't look at it and not, not notice it. And it was really bugging me. And I was watching a movie on it the other day and I said, I hate this. And it, the screen never really gets bright anymore. You know what I mean? Like it just kind of has this sort of a, and again, it's, to it's still totally watchable, totally fine, but it's like the screen just kind of has this darkish cast to it. And I don't, I don't know. I just thought, you know, I paid, I paid like 200 and 240 bucks for this TV seven years ago. Maybe we should spring for another TV. What do you think? So I got, I, yeah, I, I, I'm Miss Big Spender. I spent $270 on this one now, let me tell you. Oh, yes, I did. But it's it's nice. It's a it's an again, it's like a 50 inch. I, I don't on my entertainment center, I can't put anything on there any bigger than that. It won't hold it. And I don't want to mount it to the wall. I like it on the on the entertainment center with the little feet, you know. It's nothing fancy, but it's it's going through and doing all this stuff. My younger son helped me get it set up this evening to get the old he helped me get the old one down, get it put. I just sort of Stuck it on the wall behind the Papasan chair and covered it with a blanket with the screen kind of facing towards the wall. And we just covered it with a blanket. And it's just going to stay there until my older son wants it. Because he, he said he wanted it. He said, yeah. Because I, I asked him, I said, would you want this old TV? He said, oh, yeah, you don't want it. I said, yeah, I was just going to give it away to whoever wanted it. He said, I would love to have it. He wants to take it with him when he moves out. So he's, you know, he has a job ready to go. And it's a sounds like a really good opportunity for him and he wants to get his own place he said mom I just I just want to be on my own I said okay well you know I understand so I told him he could have the TV and so he's gonna take that with him whenever he gets ready to ready to go but um, I don't know when that will be but it'll be a little bit because he's gonna have to save up some money and work for a little while and have a little bit of a job history and I'll probably have to co-sign something for him because he's yeah, he's young. So, and I, I told him I would if you know. Um, he's gonna have to prove to me that he's serious about it, which I have no reason to think he's not. But uh, yeah, um, I have I have new neighbors, and uh, I, they. I hate this about myself. Okay. 
I know they think I'm an asshole after this evening. I know they I know they think I'm I'm a weirdo. Um do you is this an introvert thing? Now I, I am I am an introvert. I know it doesn't seem that way, but in real life I don't talk much. I really don't. And interacting with people is very stressful sometimes for me and it's draining and it leaves me exhausted. And after having to go with my son down the street to talk to neighbors yesterday about a, you know, a not, not, it was a not, not a fun conversation. Um, having to do that, I've had to meet a shit ton of new people on my new job. I have been constantly on a lot in the last week and a half, ha having to just, you know, be a lot more social than I've had to be in a very long time. I've been working from home exclusively for two and a half years. I have not worked around other people in a long time. And before that, for the two years prior to that, I only worked in an office part time, like 10 at maybe 12 hours a week. And even then I hardly ever saw anybody because the part of the building I worked in, there wasn't really anybody over there. The only person I really ever saw was the attorney I worked with. So I didn't really have to socialize face to face with people very often at all. And if I did, it was very brief, like just passing in the hallway. But now my situation is very different and I have to interact with people all day long. Just, you know, so anyway, I said all that to say, I, I am just tired and I was gonna go to an exercise class after work, but I, I just, I had this weird feeling. Sometimes I just get these feelings and I, I listen to like my instincts and my instincts were saying, just, just go home. Don't go to that class, go home, go home. So I went home and I did some stuff outside. Well, anyway, I was gonna get out and mow the front yard. My younger son is gonna mow the backyard tomorrow. I said, well, I want to, I just want to get out and mow. I want to put in my earbuds. I want to listen to some loud rock and roll and I want to tune everybody out because that's something I do. I love to go out and mow the yard and just let some music just blast. I mean, I'm not blowing my eardrums out or anything. I just want to let some music play. I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to look at anybody. Just, I just want to go out there and just get in the zone and mow the yard and weed eat and pull little weeds or, you know, trim some bushes, whatever. I don't want to have to speak to anyone. Well, I have new neighbors. Yeah, because enough shit in my life hasn't changed. Now I have some new neighbors. New neighbors. They just moved in and they have been inside. They moved in several days ago. I haven't seen hide nor hair of these people. They've been in the house. Well, Lord, as soon as I got out there mowing, they were all outside. And I think it's like a husband and a wife and like two or three kids. And they were all outside. And I just, I looked over and I'm like, son of a. And I just, I can't talk to these people. I cannot talk to another human being today. I'm sorry. I'm going to be the weird ass lady out mowing her yard. And I'm not going to say shit to the new neighbors. I'm not because I, I was up for it a day or two ago, but now the moment has passed. Like you've lived there long enough now. Like I was in the mood to say hello to you before, but now I'm, I'm well, there's something else too. They have this enormous um, truck and trailer and they park it right in the street. It's almost in front of my mailbox. It blocks, it's huge and it blocks a big chunk of the street and I'm not happy about it I think that's just where it's going to be now I think I'm gonna have to look at that every day now they have a garage they have a driveway it, they, they park it on the street yeah right on the street it takes up a whole lot of the street too and it sticks way out because it's really big it's like this gigantic truck and a gigantic trailer and it's, it takes up like half the street. I mean, you have to go around it into the other lane to go around it. And I guess that's just where it's gonna be from now on. And, and I was, I don't know, I was just kind of pissy about it and I'm tired. And after everything that happened yesterday and I'm tired of having to talk to people, I didn't say a word to them. I didn't even look at them, I just ignored them. I just ignored them. They didn't make a move to speak to me and I didn't make a move to speak to them. 
So now I'm thinking, well, now it's going to be awkward when you do speak to them. Because I was out there for about an hour and a half doing stuff in the front yard. And I said, I don't give a shit. I'm out here. I'm going to play my, I'm going to play my rock and roll. And I'm going to listen to it. And I'm going to ignore the hell out of those people. I do not care. It's not their fault. I'm being very rude and unhospitable or whatever. Like, Mary, just go talk to them. I, and I thought, no, I can't spend one more minute of my day socializing with people. I just, I, I can't do it. I don't, I've had to do way too much. I have had to meet so many people. My brain is like oatmeal right now. And I've had to learn a bunch of new stuff and get to, used to a bunch of new things. And now I have a whole new set of neighbors right next to me. And I have just about lost my mind. So... I didn't speak to them, so I'm convinced now they think I'm either I'm either an asshole or just I'm rude or I'm just a jerk or I'm crazy or all of the above. I don't maybe I am. Maybe I am. I'll speak to them. I will. I'll say, hey, welcome to the neighborhood, all that good jazz, nice to meet you, blah, blah, blah. But I wasn't in the mood for it today. I would have you ever done that? Am I am I alone in that that you just you reach a point where you 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 can't people anymore? I can't people anymore today. I I cannot. I have reached the end of my my limit. I, I cannot talk to any more people today. I cannot meet one more person. I have met so many new people and I can't do it anymore. You're living there. You'll be there later. I will meet you later. Right now, I got my earbuds in. I'm listening to my music and I'm going to mow my yard and ignore the ever-living shit out of y'all. No offense. So, and I felt bad about it, but at the same time, I thought, I, I cannot talk to them. I cannot talk to these people. I don't want to talk to these people. I don't care. I don't care who they are. I don't care where they came from. I don't, I don't care why they're here. I don't care. I'm just a grumpy neighbor right now. And I feel bad because, as far as I know, I don't think any other neighbors have actually gone to say hello or welcome or anything. I don't think anybody has. Everybody on my street is kind of like that for the most part. We all just kind of, we're like little self-contained units and we just kind of do our own thing. And uh, and we, you know, we're not very social. We just, we just aren't. I mean, shit. I don't know, but I, I just felt bad. Like, Mary, just 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 turn your music off, turn the mower off, and throw up your hand and say, hey. And I said, no, because it will be my first interaction with them, and it can't go like that. I have to shut it off, turn the music off, go over there, make nice, chitty chat, all that good jazz. It'll take 20 minutes at least. I, I No, no, I don't have it in me to do that again right now. I just can't. Can't do it. And it kind of ruined, like, I couldn't get in the zone because they were outside the whole time. I thought, well, they'll go in the house in a minute. Oh, hell no. They were outside. They stayed outside. And I thought, well, the mosquitoes ought to run them off eventually. Well, the mosquitoes are already out. I thought, come on, mosquitoes. Do one good thing for me. Just give me, give me a reason to be happy that you're here. Bite them a few times and maybe they'll go in the house. No, no, no. They stayed outside. At first they were in the front yard and then they were in the backyard. They were eating dinner back there. They had a little picnic table set up. They had dinner in the backyard. Damn it. Because I was in the backyard doing some stuff. And then while I was back there, they were in the back. Like, well, son of a bitch. Thought if I came back here, y'all wouldn't be able to see me anymore. But no, now you're in your backyard so you can see me. I'm a weirdo, I know, and and I envy people that can just have this endless well of, you love to talk to people, you love to meet new people, you never get tired of it, you could do it all day long and you never get sick of it, I'm so jealous of that. No, I, I, I only have a, a limited amount of that and then it, it depletes very quickly and it has to replenish before I can do it again with any degree of sincerity. I just, I can't, I cannot meet any more people. And it was, there's like five of them total. I think there are three kids and then the adults. So like, I can't, 
I can't. I just, no. Nope. Nope. I had the whole conversation planned out. You know how you do? Like when you're at the drive through and you rehearse 500 times what you're going to say. <laughs> or am I the only one who does that? I had it all planned out in my head how this first meeting would go. But then when they moved in... They were there, and I didn't see a soul come out of that house, I swear, for two solid days. And I'm going, come on, I got the whole conversation planned out. I want to go ahead and execute this conversation so we can get it over with. So from here on out, all I have to do is go, hey, and then go on about my day. I don't have to stop and talk to you. No offense, but I really don't want to. Because that's about the nature of any relationship I have with any of my neighbors. Hey, and that's, that's it. There's no more conversation beyond that. And we're all pretty comfortable with it. But no, these are new people, so you can't do that. Not the first time. You got it. You got to have your little chitty chat, and you'll tell me your names, and I won't remember it because I'm shitty with. I'm terrible with names. I remember faces, but I can't remember your name. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Anyway, so my neighbors think I'm a weirdo, and they're right. I am. So then I came in. We set up the TV. We had dinner. And now my son is home and I have to get to bed because I have to get up bright and early and get in the morning to go back to work. So it's going well. I am tired. And I'm tired, but I, I'm getting there. I know I keep saying that I'm like a broken record. But if you've ever started a new job, you know how it is. It's it's up up and down. You know, it's just a roller coaster of shit for a little while before you feel like you really have, you know, you really got it. So I'm just, I'm in the middle of that right now. So that's about all I got to say. But I hope your week is going well. I don't really have anything else to report. I found my sock. It's a good day. What, pumpkin? What's the matter? Huh? Hey. Hey. You're a nice cat. She won't get in my lap if I have shorts on. She doesn't like bare like bare skin you know mm -mm. if you have shorts on she doesn't want to get in your lap i i got shorts on plus i'm about to get up anyway this is a weird video i don't even know how to end it other than to say that i'm glad you're here and what <laughs> what really no she misses me during the day I think they all do. Me, kitty. Thank you so much for watching and for being here. I know things are just erratic and weird, and sometimes I, I sound like a broken record, like I keep saying the same thing every day, but I am just in the midst of learning a completely new job, and I, that's taken up pretty much all of my mental bandwidth at this point. I don't really have anything else. But thank you so much for being here. I think about y'all a lot, and I hope you're having a great day and that your week goes great. And I'll see you again soon.